Welcome to the Roundhouse Report. This is Jody Roundhouse. Today is Sunday, April 14th, and this is a boom flash post. Because my freaking videos have started turning into 30 minutes long, that's unacceptable. Uh, this is Jody Roundhouse with the Roundhouse Report. Please subscribe. Please click that little bell so you get icons because I specialize in breaking news coverage, such as this. First of all, I want to apologize. There's something going on with my webcam on my computer. The pixelation looks awful. I need to fix it, and I'm not sure how, but I apologize for that in advance. But this is more about the content than anything else. This My news source is Time Magazine, which is inherently liberal. But what I'm going to be talking about today is this. Okay? Uh, this was written by Ian Bremmer, and I've read a lot of his stuff. Uh, it's called The Risk Report. It's like a foreign policy guy. Ian Bremmer, I don't know what his leanings are, but we're going to talk about China's Belt and Road Initiative. Have you heard of that? China's Belt and Road Initiative? Let me describe to you what that is. The Belt and Road Initiative is a Chinese-backed, and this is his words, I'm reading from the article, uh, it's an, the ambitious Belt and Road Initiative is a Chinese-backed plan to unite East and West with railroad, with railways, ports, tunnels, and other infrastructure projects and transform China's economic strength at home into undisputed geopolitical power abroad, at least on an economic level, which then that turns into the military level eventually. Okay, that's what the Belt and Road Initiative is. The goal of the Belt and Road Initiative, obviously, for China is to uh, modernize their economy and... They rely very, very heavily on the ocean. One third of the world's trade travels through the South China Sea every year. One third of the world's trade is like some trillion dollars. It's a huge amount. China is land based. And if you look at a map right now on Google of like Asia and Central Asia and stuff leading into the Middle East, it's like a barren wasteland. So they're going to try to make that so that they're not totally reliant on, na on, the, on their Navy slash sea lanes in order to do their economic business. They want to have the option, if they so choose, to do it via land. So they're going to break, I guess, blow mountains apart and crap, and they're going to build this huge infrastructure project, I guess, spanning from China through the Middle East up into Turkey, into Europe. That's what it sounds like. Not a lot's known about the total, the, the totality of it. But the goal on a military level of the Belt and Road Initiative, it's almost similar to Hitler's Autobahn system the highway that the United States developed after the war. Uh, the Autobahn was built so that troops could easily transport from one point in the country to the other without any hassle. No freaking dirt roads, concrete, Autobahn. That's how the Autobahn started. That's the reason why it started. So this is kind of like that. And on a strategic level, China is a sea-based country. They're trying to change that. They're trying to make it so that they're a sea-based, but they're also a naval well, a naval sea-based country, but they also have the capability, if they so choose to use it, that they could be a land-based uh, power. Well, they will be if this goes through, but they'll be a land-based power and they could use it to their advantage if a war to break out. Because if the, well, their goal, there's a secondary goal. Yes, they want their economy to get better. And yes, they want to have greater relations with the West on an economic level, at least. But a secondary goal, a, a, a secondary goal, because the president of China, Xi Jinping, He's very nationalistic. He's very militaristic. And he's been voted in by the Communist Party of China to be the first uh, dictator for life, which hasn't been done since Mao Zedong. And this guy is openly called for war against the United States over the South China Sea. And a lot of that has to do with these sea lanes. So if the sea lanes, if there's suddenly a war that erupts, and it's looking weird because we're sending like Worship after war, Trump, you know, I love it. We're sending these freedom of navigation exercises, which basically these sea lanes that I'm talking about, these are international freedom waters. Anybody can go through these things that they want. That's why they're freaking trade sea lanes. And the United States Navy makes sure that they are protected. Chinese doesn't like that because if uh, we go to war with them and take control of that, we just freaking broke them down in terms of them being able to resupply themselves, get supplies, and then send out troops, send out supplies. Uh, if the sea lanes in the South China Sea are suddenly closed, again, uh, $1.3 trillion, that's one third of the world's trade, goes by boat through those sea lanes. Uh, China will still have a vast 
Now, we don't know the scope yet in its totality, but a vast land-based supply infrastructure already in place. The Chinese tend to be sneaky, and I'm not being freaking racist. It's a fact. I've talked to a lot of people about this, and I've read a lot of source material about this historically. Okay? They will still have a land-based supply infrastructure that could be quickly transferred into something that would help them on the military level. Because let's, let's face it, if they're put under blockade, and if everything to China's west is just crap, Freaking Afghanistan and like just Pakistan, and then to their north is Siberia. What are they gonna do? You know what I mean? So they are trying to ensure that they'll have an option, and the Belt and Road Initiative is an option for them militarily. If there is no war, which I predict a war within five to ten years between the United States and China, whether it's a flash war, you know, two or three days long, or a total war, I don't know. It depends who's in the White House, and it depends what the situation is. But some kind of armed conflict where people die and are wounded. If there is no war, uh, the, Belt Road, the Belt Road Initiative still remains a huge step forward toward further economic development, growth, expansion, and will establish an up-to-date, secure, secure, just like how we protect the sea lanes, they would be protecting this with Chinese troops, secure land-based supply chains. And that's supply chains in terms of economic goods, and that's supply chains in terms of military goods. War breaks out, you need to bring in freaking raw materials, you need to bring in fuel, you need to bring in metal, you need to bring in different types of metals, plural, for your different bombs. The reason I call this a flash post, this is a paper plate. When I was like reading this article, I was out there smoking a cigarette, I was reading this article, and I was like, F this, and I busted this out because I didn't have paper, started writing on it. Flash post. This uh, Belt Road Initiative, uh, this represents a fundamental shift, not only regarding the global economy let alone the United States economy, which is inextricably tied with that of China's. This represents a fundamental shift, not only regarding the, the global economy, but also it overlaps, as I mentioned before, uh, the already militarily volatile South China Sea issue. And again, we just a few days ago, we are using a, we are experimenting in order to counter China. We are experimenting with a hybrid aircraft carrier. It's called Lightning Carrier, and it's run by the Marines technically started out as an offshoot of the Navy and they're like these tiny fast carriers and they hold these like the F-35s and this little this freaking aircraft carrier loaded with these F-35s and a bunch of like Marines I guess an assault unit and an amphibious assault unit like blew through the South China Sea recently and that's the, one of the most blatant challenges yet that could have put down some firepower if it would have been challenged and that's what it comes down to the last time that they challenged us during a freedom of navigation exercise which I failed to explain before is simply the United States saying these are international waters and we're gonna do whatever we want. If we wanna sail through them, then we will sail through them because China is claiming all that territory, which is about six to 900 miles uh, away from their land border. It's only 12 miles is your territory. They're saying like six to 900 miles to their territory. And if you enter it, it's like you just enter China proper. So that's what they're saying. Um, so, <laughs> And we're doing these things Obama would do, like he would send one ship to challenge these fake claims that internationally have been shot down. These fake islands that the Chinese have been building in the South China Sea to consolidate themselves in that region. Uh, these freedom of navigation exercises, Obama was very hesitant to start doing them because he's such a pussy. But then eventually he started to, he sent like a freaking half warship right on the fringe of the South China Sea. Well, I'll tell you what. Trump. Since he took office, that cracker has let his admirals and his generals do their thing, generally speaking. These fake islands I'm talking about, mostly they're the, they're the Spratly Islands. Spratly Islands, if you want to Google that. But if you look at the entirety of the South China Sea, you have they have a cluster of, they have the Spratlys here, but then you have, and they've been militarized, they have landing strips on them, they have anti-ship missiles, they have aircraft. There's another island chain here, there's one up here. It would be target number one if a war were to break out against the United States, we would have to consolidate the South China Sea, hence blockade of China. What is Xi Jinping and his military advisors thinking? We need another option, land, hence the Belt Road to solve our economy and this will help our military. Okay, uh, so these individual warships, now they've turned into strike groups. We recently ran uh, like three battleships, like strike groups, uh, guided missile destroyers, right alongside uh, various islands that are claimed by the Chinese, maybe even within where you could see them. We were so close. And the Chinese aren't saying much. Let's, let's see if they end up being like the Soviets, where when they step up and they, and they ball up to you, 
And then you follow to them back and they're like, whoa, calm down. Chill. I think that's kind of like what China's doing. But again, they're sneaky. They're sneaky. Just look at their military tactics. And we're in the Korean War and then uh, Korean War mainly. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, these lightning carrier concepts, uh, they, uh, state of the art F 35s, they have like take an aircraft carrier, put six or seven of them on there, eight of them, which is a huge amount of firepower, and then put like 500 Marines and tanks and crap and amphibious assault hovercraft, which we have. That is quite devastating. Now, the issue regarding uh, this Belt and Road is they're bringing Italy on board, and that's a G7 country. Uh, that's the only country, so it's like China's trying to frag, and this is according to Ian Bremmer. You know, he's saying that China's trying to fragment uh, the European Union by dragging one of its core members. It, Italy has, I think, the third largest, they have the third largest economy in the European Union. Union, Italy does. Trying to splinter the European Union, almost like how Putin's Russia is trying to splinter NATO. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some interesting parallels that can be drawn there. But Italy, it looks like, is going to join. They recently voted in a far-right populist government. They stopped taking in migrants unless it's an emergency. And they have begun collaborating with the Libyan Coast Guard, which I don't understand because that place is in a perpetual state of civil war. So I don't know what militia controls that, but they're helping them to modernize so that they can help take care of this issue a little bit better so that there aren't flotillas of freaking packed uh, ships of refugees. Um, let me see if there's anything that I'm missing. In early March, the EU, I'm reading from the article, the European Union's executive body published a paper branding China a, quote, systemic rival, end quote. So the European Union views China as just on the foundational level as being a rival to them. Existentially. Um, the United States, we spoke up. The White House has telegraphed its concerns with a spokesperson commenting that there's, quote, no need for the Italian government to lend legitimacy to China's infrastructure vanity project, end quote. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Anything I'm missing? Anything I'm missing? Boop, boop, boop. Oh, yeah. The concern in Brussels, where the EU is situated, is exacerbated by the knowledge that U.S. President Donald Trump will, sooner, will soon turn his sights to Europe once his trade war with Xi reaches a conclusion, China. And China's getting hurt by that trade war, by the way. I mean, I mentioned it in the Western American media, but they're getting hurt. It's just easier for a dictator to hold power during a trade war than someone who has to worry about being voted back in by, by the constituents being hurt by the trade war. Um, China offers carrots in terms of uh, their economic outreach. Uh, China offers carrots while the U.S. offers only sticks. The choice for governments in Europe, especially populous, non-conformist ones like in Rome, the one I just spoke of. Their only choice in Europe has made all the e easier. It's either China or the United States. Pick one. Because you can't do both. You, you're going to half-ass both, full-ass one. And get the most out of one. China, meanwhile, gets to demonstrate yet again that it is capable of driving, driving the global agenda. Have you ever heard of China uh, driving the global agenda? They are, in this sense, economically. Uh, they're not militarily, but in terms of economically, they have been for over a decade. Not talked about a lot. It's because it's getting more and more pronounced to the point where now Italy is going to join basically China's version of the European Union. It's kind of scary. Which China's trying to get the world off of the dollar, by the way. They want to base, they want to make their own uh, bank, their own global bank based on their currency. Uh, and, and the end paragraph that Ian Bremer writes And the US and Europe get to show yet again that the world they knew for the better part of the past century continues to pass them by. I'm going to read that once more. And then they're talking about the Pax Americana, the Cold War, where America kept everything on lock. And nowadays, people my age in the 30s, millennials, grew up during the Pax Americana, and they just assume that the world's a safe, lovey-dovey place, and that we're the mean bad guys, and they're going to have a big wake-up call. China does a sudden missile blitz. This is kind of aimed toward them. And the U.S. in general, liberalism in general. Last paragraph. The U.S. and Europe get to show yet again that the world they knew for the better part of the past century, which would be the Pax Americana, continues to pass them by. I don't know what they, I don't know what he means by continues to pass them by. It's the freaking Pax Americana is what he's talking about. 
Um, and the fact that, hey, we're going back to balance of power politics. Uh, you can't get a free ride from the United States anymore. Europe, you got to beef up your own crap. You need to figure this crap out with with uh, China and their Belt and Road. You need to figure this out on your own, and you need to choose between them or us. And we are a more viable uh, economy. We have greater uh, uh, intellectual property, greater talent, individual uh, drive, initiative. It's the American way. The Chinese, meanwhile, they will hack into our into our like Boeing and Lockheed and they have forced trans trans uh, trans not trans. They have forced transfers of technology. Boycott Apple. They have forced uh, technology transfers. Um, that's how China's become what it's become. Otherwise, they suck. <laughs> Whereas the United States has become what it's become because of American ingenu ingenuity. The Chinese have become what they've become because they have literally stolen American ingenuity. All right. So the roundhouse report out. Audi. Yeah. It's a shot. It's a flash post. Please subscribe.